As the end of Windows 10 support is rapidly approaching, most people are unfortunately going out and purchasing new computers if their current ones are considered too outdated to run Windows 11, despite the hardware requirements for 10 and 11 really not being that different besides the TPM requirements. But a brave few are actually making the switch to Linux so that they can continue chugging along with their old hardware and hopefully not be creating any unnecessary e-waste but some of the people that are making the switch are fighting through the struggle of not just learning a new operating system, but also trying to find free and open source replacements for the proprietary programs like Microsoft Word and Adobe Photoshop, which unfortunately don't work natively on Linux. But what if I told you that you could actually keep those very same programs that you used in Windows that are made by Adobe, Microsoft, or whoever, on your favorite GNU Linux distro. This is where WinApps comes in. WinApps runs applications in a Windows virtual machine very seamlessly. This isn't one of those complex virtualization videos. In fact, WinApps is so easy that I think even a Windows user could get it set up. Now, the base dependencies to run WinApps are, of course, a computer that can actually run virtual machines. Most desktops that are built in the last 10 years or so, I say, should have the hardware requirements to do that. And the same probably goes for most laptops from the last five years or so. But you might have to actually turn on the virtualization settings in your BIOS because it usually isn't enabled by default, and if you haven't used virtualization before, you probably haven't turned it on yet. Next, you're going to need Docker or Podman for your virtualization backends. You could also use Libvirt, but that setup is a bit more complicated, and it generally isn't needed except for doing GPU pass-through, which is probably going to be overkill for running Office apps and even doing light Photoshop work. So I'm just going to show you guys the super simple Docker method. And you also need these simple software dependencies, which should be available to install from most uh, distros repositories, their main repositories. Now, WinApps provides a Compose template for Docker and Podman that is pretty much ready to go. Um, all you really need to update is your username and your passwords for the Windows VM, and you can change it to whatever you want. You can also change the resource allocation, and I would recommend tuning this to your machine in case you need to lower the amount of RAM or hopefully increase the amount of RAM if you've got a lot of resources to throw at this. Uh, you can also change the Windows version, so if you really want to use a Windows 10 virtual machine, which by the way, I know we talk about how the end of Windows 10 support is coming, but you should still be able to use it for running office applications and running like Photoshop and stuff like that. Even a lot of games, I would think you could run it, uh, at least until Steam decides that Windows 10 is too old to support anymore. Then you will need a different launcher to run things. You can also change the port number that this virtual machine is going to run over. By default, it's going to be port 8006. So when you have all of the settings in here configured the way you want, go ahead and run that virtual machine or install that virtual machine with this Docker Compose file. And when it's finished, you can access the GUI of the virtual machine in your browser by going to localhost port 8006. You can also continue setting up your Windows machine from here in this web view because this Docker file, it just installs Windows by default. It doesn't install Microsoft Office, Photoshop, or any of the other tools that WinApps is officially compatible with and that you would actually want to use this application for. Uh, so within this web view, you can set up those applications by signing into your Microsoft account with a paid Office 365 subscription, and I guess do the same thing with your Adobe account that has a paid subscription for Photoshop, After Effects, and all that jazz. Or, you know, you could just run some sketchy PowerShell script and install some even sketchier ISOs that you found on a Russian torrenting site and just cross your fingers and hope that everything is gonna be okay. At least your totally not pirated Adobe programs are gonna be running in a virtual machine. And remember, if you're not allowed to own the software, then you can't actually steal it. And inside of this Windows virtual machine, you can also copy and move files between it and your Linux host machine. So you can do that by going into your Explorer here and then going into the Network tab. And then you'll see this host LAN here. 
By default, it's sharing your entire home folder. So this is basically my entire home folder here. And I've got this to WinApps folder that I'm able to copy data between my host machine and my guest machine. Um, so anything that you downloaded, like these totally legit copies of Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, you can go ahead and copy those over to the Windows machine instead to install things that way. Now, even though connecting to a VM through your web browser is pretty cool, X-Free RDP has even less overhead than the browser and it does window scaling a lot better. Plus the WinApp scripts for launching different programs independently also depend on X-Free RDP. So make sure that you have that installed as well. And once your VM is all set up, once you've installed the additional programs you want, and you know, you can obviously go back and reconfigure it later. Uh, this is just the order that they lay out on their GitHub page. Once you have that set up, you should create a configuration file in your .config folder with these settings and make sure that your RDP user and your RDP pass match the username and password that you set in that Docker config file or that compose.yaml file. And if you're using an ultra high resolution monitor, you might also want to change this RDP scale from 100 to 140 or possibly even 180. And because passwords are being hard coded in this file here, it's also a good idea to set the file permissions so that the winapps.conf file can only be accessed by your user account. So go ahead and test your X-Free RDP connection by passing in your Windows username, the password, and the IP address that it's running on, as well as the cert that were in your winapps.com file. And while you're testing Windows, you can also install even more applications from here if you never went ahead and installed them through that browser window that we were looking at earlier. There's actually a couple dozen Windows native apps that are officially supported by WinApps and many more applications are supported as well. Uh, so if you add more applications later, you can always do that by rerunning the WinApps installer. It's just more convenient to do things at this point before running it. And that WinApps installer can be set up by running this big shell script here. In the readme, they just have a command to curl and run this automatically, but go ahead and give this script a good look over first just to at least avoid the habit of blindly running shell scripts that are you randomly find on the internet. Um, so go ahead and follow the prompts to install this script for the current user and select the manual method and then in the officially supported apps, go ahead and select the ones that you've already installed to your system that you want to essentially create shortcuts to be able to launch from your application launcher on the Linux host machine. And if you're installing the officially supported versions like Photoshop and Illustrator 2022 or Office 365, they should show up here. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be on the next page of other applications. And that's it. Now you can launch applications from your application launcher like any other app that you've installed on your Linux desktop. The virtual machine that Docker creates uh, also mounts your Linux home folder automatically. I think I mentioned that so you can save data to your Linux and pass data back and forth. You should also keep in mind that this is still going through a compatibility layer. So your mileage may vary in terms of performance. Usually the first time you launch a Windows application this way after rebooting, there could be say 20 seconds or so of delay waiting for the app to launch. It's sort of like if you ever used WSL2 on Windows to launch a Linux application in a Windows environment. And this WinApps program is pretty much just like WSL2, but it's for Linux. So I guess you could think of it as a Linux subsystem for Windows. And the original author of this program even thought about calling it the Linux subsystem for Windows originally. Um, now it's also possible to run some really graphics heavy workloads like Photoshop or even Adobe Premiere, but this setup really isn't going to support gaming that well, and that's because of the immense lag that RDP is going to cause. Like you're basically remote viewing a virtual machine, even though the virtual machine's running on your local computer, but it's just still significantly more imp input lag than if you were just running a game natively on Linux or if you were running that game natively on Windows. And even in Photoshop, for example, you can see that there is a noticeable delay between 
where the cursor is and where the drawing actually starts to show up on the screen. Um, so I'm pretty sure you could configure GPU pass-through and maybe it would make this a little bit easier. It definitely would give you more graphics power to, like I said, render a larger Photoshop job or especially render an Adobe Premiere job or CAD work or anything else like that. But I think when it comes to Office applications, like if you need some of the few extensions and options that say Microsoft Excel has that LibreOffice Calc doesn't have, I think that this is a very, very awesome solution for getting that work done without having to dual boot, you know, reboot into Windows just to run Microsoft Excel. I can't imagine of anything worse. And Windows is running in a containerized environment, so you can pipe all of your network traffic through a VPN if you don't want Microsoft spying on you through the VM, and you can be ensured that all of the traffic is actually gonna go through that VM instead of just having to trust Microsoft's proprietary network stack with it. Another thing it looks like is that this application, WinApps, does not have full Wayland support yet, uh, so if you are a person who has switched to using Wayland on Linux, you may have a little bit of trouble or I think you might have to use uh, X Wayland or something like that to get compatibility with it. I haven't really messed with Wayland too much yet. I know I've, it sounds like I'm a dinosaur, I'm way behind the curve, but yeah, this is part of the reason why I'm just waiting for there to be uh, more implementations of some more niche software that I may want to use or that people may want to use in general before I go ahead and hop on that bandwagon. But yeah, that was WinApps. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm. Check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or you can buy accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.